What's not working, Kira? Always start with the negative. What? Always start with the negative. What's broken? Um. Or what's working? Let's start with the positive. What's working? Show me something cool. Share the screen. How do you search with multiple tags? How do you search with multiple tags? You search for multiple tags at once. Oh, yeah. Um, go to... So James, this is like, there's your question. How do you see multiple tags, right? And you're gonna have a start time and we're gonna make a little video that's gonna answer it. All right, did you um, check the spreadsheets? I have not. Oh. It's been crazy. I'm so sorry, I've just been like, I am so far behind. Join, join the rest of us. Yeah, so, but yeah. So which tags do you wanna search for? Uh, you can search for young. That's search for a tag to begin with. You type the value of a tag in there. Yep, and then click on advanced search. And filter, right? And then um, um, so you want to write a filter expression. Okay, which is that will tell you how to write a filter expression. Let's see what it does. Click that. That's interesting. It takes you outside. Um, yeah, so you can follow all those tutorials, how to write filters, or go back. And um, so the way we've been doing it is you write, you open a, you open a set of square brackets um, before you write. And I was wrong about a set. You open with a single square bracket. Um, yeah, let's get rid of young. Okay, and get rid of that other bracket for now. Which other bracket? The second one. Yeah, so then you want to search for a tag. And then in, bra in a single bracket, um, hold on one second. Hello? What's up? I'm in middle class. All right. Um, search, put the word young. And then close the bracket for young there. And then, so that doesn't work. So why doesn't that search? Um, do you have anything tagged young? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> well, let's search for some tag that you've got. I'm having some tag issues, or not issues, oh, okay. I'm just working on my tags. Um, native and alien, try those. Young. Oh, capital Young, capital Y Young. Well, I, I probably don't have anything ta tagged to that yet either. Okay, yeah, so obviously a tag that you've got, native works. And then um, inside that, so click on Doll's Eyes. So let's see what Doll's Eyes is tagged with. So that's tagged with poisonous. So grab poisonous, because I certainly can't spell the thing, but you probably can. <laughs> and uh, at, inside, the, for inside the bracket, there, right, tag poisonous. Tag, all bracket, poisonous, close bracket. Okay, so that's how you search for both of them. Hmm. Okay, now put the exclamation point, put an exclamation point in front of the second work tag. And that will search for and return all those that match native and don't match poisonous. That's nice. Okay, and then so grab that whole filter expression, copy, paste, you know, copy, oh yeah, right, nice. copy that, right? And now you've got a filter expression. Now where do you put filter expressions? In Tiddlers? Well, in, but in, in containers, basically. So start a new Tiddler, and what kind of containers do you write? So you know how to make list links, right? Well, yeah, I copied them. Yeah, so copy, and so it's list links. Um, do you have a list link somewhere? 
from everywhere. Well, I hmm. could go and find a list links. That's fine. That's list thumbnails is fine. So paste that and then see where it says filter inside of quotes. Uh -huh. So replace that filter with the filter you just made. Make sure you get all the brackets and stuff and then put it right inside those quotes. Yep. Hey, that's nice. So the point with the filter expressions is you can paste them anywhere you see something that says filter colon or filter equals. And you can build those filters in advanced search. Uh, so go back to advanced search. Yeah, right. And um, Right, and you can build a filter there, and you can do other things for than tags. So if you click on filters, um, actually in, in design, right? If you search for filters, or tinuiki.com, whatever, yeah. It's um, my, my computer has been starting to die without warning. Uh, so, but you'll see that um, when you look at the help for filters, they're made up of many, I just don't understand why everybody doesn't just keep this page open all the time. I just, I, I don't, you know. Um, you should just download it. It's my homepage. It's your home page. There you go. Um, did we get? It's working on it, I think. Yeah, it is. Hi. Yeah. It's slow. Um, so I think if you search for filter syntax there, you'll get to the same help pages, but there may be. Steve, I've noticed with yours, it keeps going slower and slower when you kick uh, when you click on it. Is that because yeah. you have a lot of content, or is that Dropbox throttling us? No, I don't think it's drop. It might be Dropbox throttling. I can. I'll, I'll move it to a different place, and we'll see if that's tested. So, what am I supposed to do? Um, so, there's filter expression, the third one down. Um, and that's like if you want to get really into it. But if you go to filter parameter, I think, or filter operators, filter operators. Yeah, so here you can search for objects that, you know, all titles, backlinks, backlinks is very cool list. And then you'll see that tag is just one of these, right? Actually tag isn't even listed there. Hmm. Um, so there's, you can put them in order, there's string operators. You can build all sorts of filters. Oh, there's special tag operators, right? Filter the input by tag, find them that have the input tags. So you can go kind of both ways. You know what I mean by tagging up and tagging down? Uh, not yet, I didn't get the answer to what tagging up was. So in your case, um, Search design right for backlinks. We can see switch to design right. I did. On my computer, I, I can see design right. Did you find anything with backlinks? Yep, I found backlinks operator examples and backlinks operator. Um, let me, there should be code with backlinks in it. Let me pull it out. There it is. Um, look at, um, um, look at the documentation macros. Maybe I put them in there. I just dropped them in. I was playing around with it. Look at the documentation macros. Well, it's kind of slow. <laughs> um, let me see if I can find it. Um, let 
Oh, go to CSV to JSON converter. And um, grab the top lines to the, to the, grab the top code off of that tiddler. The, up to the, um, no, you have to edit it. Um, to the HR, to the, to the, the HR is a horizontal rule. So it's like the top five lines, Co copy that and paste that into hyperplants. Now tell me about your tagging structure in hyperplants. What's the, so you've got black raspberry as a plant, right? Yep. What's tagged black raspberry? What's tagged by raspberry? What's tagged to black raspberry? How could you get, how could you navigate to black raspberry? What tiddler could you be on? Um, you could have a leaf, a flower, a fruit, a stem, or a whole plant that's tagged to black raspberry. Okay. And black raspberry and it's all through tagged tag. to hyperplant. Okay, are there any plants that have links to black raspberry? No. Are there any tiddlers that have links to any of your other tiddlers or everything's in the tags right now? Everything's tags right now. So there's no text, right? Um, yeah, no, no text. Okay. Um, then that's not going to be very interesting. There's a, there's a way to show you the tags that are pointing to a tiddler and I'll have to work on that. It's not called back tags, but it's, it's, um, you can play with it. It's the tagging filter. If you look at the info, um, of one of your plants, like this, pick one of your plant tiddlers. Yep. And do a get info for that. And so this tiddler ta is tagging, but is tag. So click on tagging and it should be tagging. Those are all the tiddlers that are tagged with red clover, correct? Yep. Yes. And so what you don't know is the tiddlers that are tagging red clover. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I can't remember how to do that. We should look for that. But that's what I mean by it. So red clover is, is, is tagged by hyperplants, right? So red clover is tagged up to hyperplants and then down to red clover flower, fruit young. So it kind of sits between hyperplants yeah. and red clover flower. That's what I mean by tagging up and tagging down. That's what I thought you meant. I just thought there would be more to it than that. No, um, and then it sometimes falls apart because then there's going to be very – you know, when you start tagging across, which is where things get interesting. So um, that's what we did when you tagged red clover flower to red clover ball. It's kind of an across, they're not a up down relationship, but they're uh, they're not hierarchical. So this is very cool. So so um, cool. Are you importing these, or are you building these tiddlers by hand? Sorry. What? Are you importing these tiddlers or are you building them? Like I'm, I'm importing them. The day before uh, you got the CSV to um, the whole import process from a spreadsheet working, mm -hmm. I enlisted the help of my programmer brother to get all these tiddlers in. So I gave him the material. He did some coding magic and he generated, he can generate tiddly wikis with the stuff I give him. Really? Yeah, so that's what I did with this. That's how all the photos got in here. I started by hand. I did about, I don't know, 70 photos, and it was getting uh, impractical. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how many did you put in? Here, there are about 130. Okay. And what did he build that from? A um, uh, he was doing something in Eclipse with, I think, I think, I don't know what he was doing it in. I think it was HTML. Oh, okay. So let's look at your tiddlers. Let's look at one of your plant tiddlers that he imported for you. Cool. And so let's look at it. So what are the, what are the fields that are in this tiddler? It's the same field in embed and thumbnail. Okay. So they're the same image right now, right? Yeah. 
Okay. Do you have a list of all these, your flickers and stuff? Like, can you import them again? I do through the thing my brother made. Yeah. And now mm -hmm. are you tagging these? Mm -hmm. Are you tagging them by hand or are you tagging them with pop-up tagger? Um, I haven't used pop-up tagger yet. Okay. And how do you know which ones are tagged? You look, right? Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, I, I just click around on the tags. But you don't have like a list of ones that you haven't tagged yet? No, I, I make sure they're all tagged. <laughs> By kind of keep going through them over and over again? Yeah, when they're, um, when they're translated from the text document I have into a tiddly wiki through my brother's program, they have, um, this would, this had multiflora rose and flower attached to it when it came in. Oh, okay. And you gave him a text document? Yeah. When oh, I, when I text document. document? Because that's the interesting part is because you wrote the text document, you know, so embedded in your text document is your logic. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say you wanted to see it? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like really, really big links to Flickr. And now my computer is frozen. Mm hmm How did you write that? I wrote down all the species names. I wrote uh, the plant parts once and then I copied them for all what is now 21 species. It started with 50 and that was a lot. And once I had that structure, I went through Flickr and gathered the photos myself, which is not something I can automate anyway currently. Correct. And I copied those in, in the format my brother gave me, a little space there and exclamation mark um, for the species name. And I did that for all of them. Okay. Not those. I failed. At what? Um... at primarily at convincing you at the very least to have done this in a spreadsheet. It looked like a complicated spreadsheet. But you only, here you only have two columns. What do you mean by columns? Well, you've got a column for the, what's with dandelion there? How come there's no image on dandelion? Because I forgot it. Where'd dandelion go? Yep. Okay. So you've got two columns. One is the species or plant name or object name, and the other is the embed code. And what your brother did is he went back up. What 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 did he do? Did he what did he do looking at fruit young? Did he tag fruit young to something? Um. Yeah. Now what I'm doing now is I'm putting uh, underscores in between the fruit and the young, so that gets tagged fruit and fruit young because we didn't know if there's a way to uh, search for multiple tags at once. Okay. Um, so what would that leaf young object be? It's a tag. It wouldn't. What's wouldn't, the name of the tiddler going to be? Leaf Space Young? It wouldn't have a future as a tiddler. No, everything's a tiddler. Yeah, that's, I think, I'm still working on these, these tag things. I think it would be, uh, I'm not going to have a Leaf Young tiddler or tag. It'll be Leaf and it'll be Young and you can search by both if you want. Okay. Um. One second. Hello. 
would you call Marlies, ask her to give me a call so everyone will have called and interrupted my class? I'm teasing you. I got to go in the middle of class. All right. Um, so James, well, when we started this conversation with Tia, like five, 10 minutes ago about the data structure and stuff, yep. that would have been the break for multi-tag searching. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Kira, um, this is fascinating. Okay. Um, because there's a, um, a struggle sort of to understand the object model of the tiddly wiki and the database in general. Um, so you guys, you're sort of stuffing a two dimensional model into a three dimensional system. That's how I see it. Mm. So, the value of, so the, the end of the picture for, for leaf there, right? So the second column in my sort of imagination is you've got name, space, embed code, right? Yep. Every line is name, space, embed code. So if you did that in a spreadsheet, it would be two columns, the name and the embed code, right? Yep. And what you're doing is you're building a set of tiddlers, one tiddler per line, and there's a tiddler called leaf, and leaf has an embed code. Mm-hmm. Yep. So what's the one above it, Leaf Young? What's Leaf Young going to be? That's a tiddler. So you've got lots of tiddlers with Leaf. Are they the same? Nope. These are each, every one of these um, plant parts is uh, one level under the hierarchy of the species. So this is a buckthorn fruit, buckthorn flower, buckthorn okay. leaf. Okay, okay, I got it, yep. So, so you invented a data structure, and you wrote a code that says, okay, go down, grab my, the line that begins with an exclamation point, and then the fruit, the flower, the leaf, young, the leaf, the stem, and the whole plant, and build, it, build me how many tiddlers? Well, as, as many as are specified. One, two, three, four, five, six tiddlers that are specific, plus the, 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 the species tiddler, plus the buckthorn tiddler, right? Uh -huh. So there's an unlimited number, a random, not a random number, but an unspecified number of sort of sub tiddlers under buckthorn. Yep. They all belong to buckthorn. Okay. Um, And then where, so those seven tiddlers that all belong to Buckthorn, what are they tagged with? They're tagged Buckthorn, uh, fruit is tagged Buckthorn and fruit. Okay, so they're tagged, yeah, okay, so then, so, that, so fruit is going to have two tags, flower is going to have two tags, leaf young is going to have two tags. Well, it's going to... Not leaf young, leaf young is going to have leaf young and Buckthorn. We'll leave leaf young out for now, right? Yeah. Okay, that's a, that's, well, it's, that's, okay. And then what's the, and there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiddlers, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And one of them's called buckthorn fruit? Yep. And one of them's called buckthorn flower? Yep. Okay. And um, what's buckthorn tagged with? Buckthorn is tagged with hyperplants. With hyperplants. Mm -hmm. And then what are you adding? Or nothing particularly right now, right? This is kind of the whole thing right now so far. This is the setup. Um, what I'm personally going to be adding other than just collecting what I think are the best photos, I'm going to add a section um, called plant stories. So I'm going to be adding some background on each plant. Okay, yeah, because if we, if we had chatted about this and the best photos, that that's fun. That's good, but don't spend time on the best photos because really it's about the navigational structure. I mean, it's wonderful to have good photos, but let's assume that if we're gonna when you publish this, we might you know you have to get photos differently or something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, because it's so 
So when I'm on buckthorn fruit, what tiddlers can I navigate to? You can navigate to um, those tagged buckthorn. Like, what? From buckthorn fruit, what tiddlers are going to be linked from that? I don't think any are going to be linked. It's, it's all navigating by tags. Okay, so let's call navigating by tags links, because really yeah. they're links. Uh -huh. So, and what they are, they're multi, they're links, they're lists of tiddlers that I can go to. So from buckthorn fruit, I'm going to have a list of all the buckthorn tiddlers available to me, right? Yep. And all the fruit tiddlers. Yep. And that's about it. And that's it, right? Two of them. And the buckthorn tiddler and the fruit tiddler, but yeah. Same thing. Yeah. The, the list of, it's going to say buckthorn. It's, yes, exactly right. Yep. Okay. Um, That's perfect. So is this code, this code that, that he had to write, that was sort of annoying thing, right? Uh, okay, yeah. I'm sorry you had to do that because the spreadsheet kind of gives you, I mean, it actually directly gives you all the tools you need. But. Um, can, it, can it embed fields as well? Oh yeah, I can do, yeah, I'll open that spreadsheet. Well, you can write an unlimited number of fields that you can decide like over and over and over again to change. And so the advantage of doing it through the spreadsheet is you can see it. I mean, if you wrote the code yourself, and can you run that code yourself and generate new files whenever you want? No. No. So you've, you've lost control of your product. You've subbed it out. So, um, I've given it to a translator. Huh? I've given it to a translator. Yes, but um, and so what? What you? So you've got a pretty, you've got a very good view of the structure, but it's going to be difficult for you to change the structure. Um, And I think I just let me let me send you to a new place. Um, let me send you to a new place, and let's see if. You can, this is what I was going to roll out to the class, but I just am running so late. I haven't had a chance. Where do I chat? Chat. Did you get that chat? Oh, I see it on your screen. Of course you did. You do? I don't no, see I don't. it on my screen. I don't see it on your screen. It came up on mine over mine, but you should see it. Yeah. Having trouble exiting full screen. Yeah, I know. Zoom is, it's kind of half Zoom and half your browser and Zoom is, uh, you can just stop sharing for a second, that'll. Kia ora, Tato. Hello, how you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, do you, are you getting, do you get the chat? Uh, is that the chat from Zoom? Oh, uh, yes. No, of course you're not going to get the chat from Zoom. No. Are no. you in the Gmail account right now? Uh, I am connected to a Gmail account, yes. Okay. I'll, I'll put it there, too. Cool. Actually, what I can do better yet is put it in the raw designery. Um,
And so, uh, James, this is our third segment of the workshop. Okay. Um, oh, you're stitching them all together, eh? Well, we're breaking them apart, actually. <laughs> and so this is called the um, preliminary... Um, what is this called, Kara? What are you doing? You are sort of preliminary improved top up tagger. Because um, it turns out that there's a bunch of people who are trying to do that. So, so, um, so, and there's specific steps. So start with that Dropbox user content one. That's the multi sequential narrative one, and that's a um, and and I've just saved that. So uh, Hagar under the more, it's the most recent tiddler that I just created. Oh righty, yeah. And um, and so are you still doing Dropbox here, or you do Tiddly Spot, or you do Chrome, or whatever, right? Chrome and, and Dropbox. Okay. So this has no tiddlers in it, so there's some. It's not been updated. So just save it. Do a file save as. Okay, so this is your stem photo, Sunny Polly, is it? Yeah, but it's it's an it's a, um, but if you follow the steps, you can recreate it with empty, and that's I think what. So um, Kira was just showing us a very cool program that that she wrote with her brother, that parses um, parses tiddlers in groups, which is very cool. Um, yeah. But I'm encouraging her to. To use the spreadsheet model, which allows people to control their own production environment without having to go outside. Um, so this is your own version of this. And then, so scroll down. We did the first part, um, and then you want to drag those right up there. Up, 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 up. Yeah. Copy those tiddlers, CSV, the JSON documentation, copy those to your new one. To my what? To your, did you, did you download and save the, this? Yep. Yes. So where am I copying them to? Wait a second, now you've, um, you have to get the empty edition, I'm sorry. Get the empty edition, Copy those, get started, scroll down. See, I, I should never release stuff until I've reviewed it again. Done. Well, I, I already did the, um, I did this a while ago. Awesome. Yeah, okay, so, so I think you've got, yeah. So, um, and you still have that spreadsheet that you were working with or have you given that one up? Um, I have it somewhere. I but it's not up to date, right? You've put all this effort. You know what you can do? Open up a Google spreadsheet, a blank one. <laughs> stop sharing for a bit. Yeah. James, what's going on with you? Show me something while Kira's looking for stuff. I wish I could see two screens at the same time. What would you like to know? Something new. Um, I started going through my wiki. Well, let's see it. Let's see I don't want to know anything. I want to see it. So Kira, um, open up a new spreadsheet. And then do a, when you get the file import, we'll switch back to yours. Are we still on your screen here? That's fine. Fine. Not anymore. Okay. What's hyperwrite, James? Um, just a term I came up because that's what we're doing. We're kind of hyperwriting. What's it mean? It's just another word for hypertext. Add a name is something. Um just basically that's what we're doing. We're writing hypertextually, so we're hyperwriting. Yes. Yeah, but the I was just no, I'm very curious because you know I'm very fixed on these words. Yep. Um because this is more than just 
putting links in, you were writing hypertextually. It's a way to link and access information of various kinds as a web of nodes in which the user can browse as well. Okay. So that's that. Yeah. So basically, it's the same setup that you've been seeing, yeah. um, but when you click on one, they're more structured now. You got the image up here, the holder for the image, the holder for the description, and a little information about, like this one's a model train. So yeah, that goes over. Can I see your, your tiddler? Edit the tiddler. So, if you were going to annotate this tiddler with, with some code, okay. so, um, I mean with some commenting, so mark off your um, transclusion. You can just put it right, at, right before that HR, or right after the HR. So what are, what are you transcluding? I'm really not transcluding anything. All I'm doing is I have the embedded photo in there. Okay, so the tra the embed's a transclusion. That works, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So okay. in a table, you've noticed no HTML. Yep. And I got the HR for the line break. Yep. All the information down here. Eventually what I would like to do is have a template set up just like this. Yep. So I can have my if go into the Flickr, pull it out of the Flickr, put it in the Dropbox. Yeah. So your first steps in this is let's let's do that for this one. And are you importing these tiddlers or are you building them each one by hand? I'm building the framework right now so eventually I can get the if. Because the problem I'm having right now, hang on one second, is I want them all to be structured like this. Yep. And it's going to be a little bit difficult trying to do it in a spreadsheet, having this structure like this. Not necessarily, but um, where's your text stored, or have you do you write it? Uh, I just what I do um, for a new one, I just go to clone, and do it that way, and have all the code in just in just cut and paste. Okay, so open this. So you're not importing them. You're not planning to really import them. Not yet. I'm just, like I said, I'm just getting down to framework because eventually I'm going to have to F, take all the information, put it in a Dropbox, and have my Raspberry Pi go in the Dropbox, take that file and name it a dot .ted and see if I can get it to import that way. Mm -hmm. Try to make it all automated so I don't have to do nothing. Yep. Yeah, that's never, yeah. Okay, so here's a quick way to start with train. So edit this tiddler, I'll give you like two kind of quick things to work on and see and play with around. Grab the code for description. I'm sorry, the text of the description. And put that in a field called description. Not the, you don't want the, yeah, exactly. Put that in a field called description. And add it. And then up above, replace the, the, your text with the transcluded version of description. So just get rid of your text there. And it's, um, it's two exclamation, it's two braces, curly braces, and then two exclamation points for this tiddler. And then the name of the field description. and close it with two curly braces. Yep. And that should be there, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, we've got an extra vertical bar probably in your description field. Yeah, right there. And you can do the same thing with your embed, right? So, your em so then your code looks like, when you look at it, it just, Yeah, you know. it's simple. Yeah, and that's easy, and then, because then once you have that, then that goes in your, temp in your tiddler called template. Correct. So, so that's where you want to get to as soon as possible. So you can replace the embed code as well yep. by putting that in an embed field. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and the same with the uh, title even. That's the caption probably. Yep. 
Yeah. So instead of so, yeah, you want everything. You want all the data out of your tiddlers into fields if you can. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. So here, here, are you ready to go back to your spreadsheet? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So let's look at yours, and then I'm gonna have to. Well, we can hang out because there's somebody coming today. I think for the IDT hangout. But we'll just go right in there. Um, and I understand why going to a code to a um, Code works, and if it works for you, that's fine. Um, but I wanted to give you an idea of. Oh, this is yours, right? Yeah. What spreadsheet was I supposed to find? Oh, uh, just start a new one. You file new. Okay, and then from the empty spreadsheet, so we know we're not overwriting anything. Um, do a. I think it's called file upload, maybe. You really need to put a new spreadsheet in, but just like to make sure that we're not writing something. So file import. And so you want to do an upload and select the file from your computer, wherever, do you know where it is? Yeah, what file? The text file that you showed me? Yeah. Um, oh, I missed it. Did it ask you what you wanted it to be? Uh, no, it. There it is. Yeah, so we want to um, custom um, under separator character. Well, let's see if it detects it automatically. Create a new spreadsheet. It might detect the space automatically. I don't think so. Hmm. Um, I'm not gonna, oh, there's probably spaces in your other thing, right? Um, do custom. I've got it under separator character custom and use the um, open angle bracket. Yeah, try that. So this should have put, it's not going to be perfect. Pretty good though. Um, and you could easily get it better by going hand editing and putting a comma after or an X or a um, some special character like a dollar sign that's not used elsewhere after doll size in that space that your brother was using. Uh -huh. So you put any delimiter in custom a delimiter and then you'll have your, your tiddlers here and you can do a file save as just like you've done before. Um, and so like for fruit, like go over to um, like, you know what you're going to tag fruit, right? Well, I, I know some of the things I'm going to tag it and other things not so much. But, but you can continue, but they're tagged. Um, Did you mean the tiddler fruit? Yeah. So you'd want to call that doll's eyes fruit. And that's why you're saying it's easier to use your program, your brother's program, because it goes back up and gets the title and builds the title sequentially and allows you to build it sort of in this um, outline kind of framework. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I got it. Um, that's it. Yeah. So I mean, I think that's that's interesting. It kind of, what you're doing is that's the two dimensional thing. You've got a two dimensional outline that's got species, and then under it, all the different parts, and then species under it, all the different parts, right? And um, and then you're allowing you're building tags to move from section to section in the outline. Um, yeah. So your the challenge is going to come when. I'm going to challenge you to add another dimension, add a third dimension to this. And go back to your data, add a third dimension, and then import them all again. And that's where your challenge is going to come. It's going to be hard because, you, because you'll have committed to this two-dimensional structure, this outline thing, 
Um, and the spreadsheet has a, you could do it in that, you'd have to go back and edit that file, but you can't like copy, you know, the name of a, you can't sort it and then tag them on the basis of how they're sorted or something like that. You see what I mean? I think so. Would the third dimension be sideways? Because I've got it going up and down right now. You've got it going up and down. Well, I'm, I'm tagging up and down. Yeah. The Not third dimension might be non, like, hierarchical, like, um, um, like, um, continent. What continent are the planets found on? So that might only go to the names to the doll's eyes, you know? Um, what else is there in plants? What else can you tell me about plants that's not, that's about their species? You might talk about, um, I have, things, I have things like edible and inedible and native and non-native going. Okay. And do those only get tagged to the native? Are some plants edible and some plants not edible? Yeah, though usually it's just... Are some leaves edible, some leaves not edible? Yeah. So the flowers of some plants are edible and the leaves of others? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be non-hierarchical, right? That would be a third dimension. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on that part. So you're putting those in by hand now, right? Yeah, that's, that's my plan. I've just started. Okay. So well, what if you decide that you want to do... Um, now, you don't like that word stem. You want that word stem to be different. You have to change them by hand. And you couldn't, get, unless you re imported your tin. So, what I'm worried about is that you're, once you start adding data at the tiddler level in your wiki, you can't go back and re import the data and start over again without having to do all that work over. And that's a, both a, um, that's a challenge sort of for writers, for wiki writers, to try not to commit. We lack commitment. <laughs> try not to commit to text or code without being able to do it again. Because invariably you're gonna make mistakes and have to start over and you don't wanna create work in your wiki. I mean, you might want to and then say, okay, then I understand that, so this is my process and this is, you know, I can't go back and add more unless you can. You know what I mean? So you want to make sure that you're okay with that. Um, I think your project works really well now. Um, I'd, be, I'd be tempted to try the rename tags thing uh, for, for shifting around content if I decided I, I wanted okay. to change them. Yeah, so I think so. Basically, what you've got is you're going to close this portion of your project, right? Yeah. You're not going to go back and do more plants or anything. This is it. You're done. I'm, I'm building the foundation, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Um, then then make sure, then let's just stick with that. Let's make, and then make sure that you describe in some detail how you did that, where these things came from. And add that as a tiddler for that kind of describes your overall project. Where are the... So like in your hyperplants wiki? Um... You've got a bunch of different kinds of tiddlers. So maybe create a new tiddler for me here. And um, yeah, and then you've got a bunch of, you've got sort of what you call like um, things that are tagged to hyperplants. So you can just write tag hyperplant, you know, things that are tagged to hyperplants. And you can put that inside a little tag call. Yeah. What other things do you have? What other kinds of tiddlers? So instead of things, let's call them tiddlers. What other kind? And let's number it. Uh, is there a good way to make a numbered list? Yep, number sign. Oh. Well, that's yep. nice. <laughs> um, asterisk is a bullet unnumbered list. What mm -hmm. other kind of tiddlers do you have? I have tiddlers tagged to plant parts, which is the same idea. Oh no, we're very different. 
plant parts. Oh, I'm okay. Yep, we click on plant parts. What do we have? Beautiful, excellent. Okay, what else you got? Um, yeah. I have Tiddler's tag to leaf and plant, and not plant, leaf and flower, fruit, things like that. Are those plant parts? Yeah, they are. Yeah, so you've got Tiddler's tag to one or to a single, to a, a single plant part, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's a, okay. What else? And then there are the descriptors of the, um, the things tagged to the things tagged to plant parts. Mm. Which are out on their own. What, what else is there besides edible? There's poisonous, native, alien, young and mature are supposed to be there. They're, they're not there yet. Okay, so those need to have a common tag as well to get them onto this list. It's true. Okay, good. That's the tagging up thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to take this. Um, anyway, we're close to done, so let's take a break. One second. <laughs>